I have so many ongoing series I'm reading right now. So let's add 12 new series on for 2024. Hey everyone, welcome back to the next chapter. My name is Christopher Navo, and I'm gonna be your host. If this is your first time joining, thank you for stopping by, I do appreciate it. Please leave a like and a comment. Let me know what you think of the content. Today's video is sort of a uh, part two of my most anticipated reads going into 2024. Now, the first video covered uh, more or less uh, standalone uh, books, uh, or uh, if they're part of a series, you can read like individual books from a series. Now, this uh, this video is going to focus more on actual numeric uh series that I want to at least get started going into 2024. So without any further ado, let's get started. So this list is in no particular order, but the first series I have on the list is The Bound of the Broken by Ryan Cahill, book one being Of Blood and Fire. Now, this series, uh, Ryan takes a lot of those classic fantasy elements, those tropes, like the chosen one, the, the village farm boy, uh, dragons, elves, dwarves, and he makes all of those his own with a modern voice. Uh, Ryan is a uh, self-published author and a very prominent one, not only in the uh, self-published uh, circles, but in fantasy in general. Uh, so he's definitely made a very large impact on the uh, fantasy community, which really makes me happy to see uh, an indie uh, self-pub author do that. I'm really excited to get into this series. Uh, I've heard wonderful things from uh, prominent booktubers like Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, Patrick Leo, Library of a Viking. Yeah, so definitely something I think I'm going to enjoy as well. Now that I heard there are two ways you can re start this series. You can start with the first book of Blood and Fire, or you can start with the prequel novel, The Fall. Now, um, the first book is more of that slow burn, uh, you know, first book, world building, uh, establishing uh, everything uh, for the reader. Uh, and The Fall is more of like, throws you right in the action. So that might come off maybe a little confusing. If you've read this series, let me know what you recommend I start with. Otherwise, I think I will probably start with the actual first book of Blood and Fire and then read The Fall after I read the first book. Next series I have on my list is Threadlight. This is by Zach Argyle, book one being Voice of War. Now I've had Zach's books again on my TBR for quite a while now. I've actually had a couple of his uh, hardbacks in, on my shelves. Uh, I picked them up at the localized bookstore. They have already been signed. Uh, Zach is actually a local in my area. So I imagine he goes into a lot of the local bookstores and signs their stock. Um, and uh, I got to meet him one time at a book signing as well. Uh, I didn't have anything on me at that time because I am waiting on uh, his Kickstarter of his uh, trilogy. And that is supposed to be hopefully arriving in 2024. I've seen prototypes of it and it looks fantastic. And I figured that's when I'm gonna start reading Threadlight. Um, this book uh, and it, the series in general gets a lot of uh, comparisons to uh, Brandon Sanderson's Stormlight Archive, uh, a series I have not read yet. So I actually probably prefer to read Zach's uh, books first before I read Stormlight. And maybe I'll make the comparison that Stormlight is like Threadlight. Third up here, I have a sci-fi series, and that is The Hybrid Helix by JCM Byrne, book one being Wistful Ascending. Uh, guys, I wanted to read this so bad uh, last year. So many of my fellow booktubers were uh, reading this series, and not just the first book, but they were just like binge reading all four books that are currently available. I'm not too sure if there's any more coming up in the series, but as of this recording, there are four. Ah oh, man, uh, this sounds so much fun. I'm hearing uh, the protagonist is kind of like this half superhero. Uh, the premise is kind of like Invincibles meets uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a lot of action and wit and humor. Uh, just from a little bit of these uh, little pickups, I get like this nice, fun, pulp sci-fi read. So it sounds right up in my wheelhouse. I'm really glad I can now give this series and attention it deserves in 2024, and we'll see how it lands for me. 
Fourth up here, I have the Gunmetal God series. This is by Zamil Akhtar. First book being the self-titled Gunmetal Gods. Have you ever judged a book by its cover? Well, that's kind of what I did when I first saw Gunmetal Gods uh, promoted. Uh, this series is uh, three books. Uh, there is also included one novella, uh, and um, it's just a series that I've been wanting to get to uh, ever since I saw it. Uh, I think uh, mostly prominent on uh, Steve Talks Books channel. Uh, he talks really uh, highly of this series. I'm all for dark fantasy. There's uh, some vibes of Middle Eastern, South Asia influences in this book, so it'll be a different, unique reading experience. Um, and it, I also get some uh, Eldridge Horror Cthulhu vibes from just basically the cover. I don't know. Again, I'm going in blind, and that's how I like to keep it. Fifth on this list is The Last War series by Mike Shackle, book one being We Are the Dead. Uh, this is another very dark fantasy um, I don't know too much about. Uh, I've seen this highly regarded on Mike from Mike's book reviews channel. Uh, I bring him up a couple times because I don't know if he's just a good influence on me or a bad influence on me, but regardless, uh, I seem to like a line on a lot of his tastes. So usually if he likes something, I'm probably gonna like it. Um, I'm just a sucker for a dark fantasy anyway. Uh, and another book I'm going in totally blind on. So um, this is something I wanna get to very soon. Now January looks like it might be booked and I'm trying to keep my mood reads uh, pretty varied. So um, I'm not sure if I'll start it in January, but I really want to get to it as soon as I possibly can. So I am looking into February. At number six, I have another sci-fi series. This is the Deathstalker series by Simon Green. Uh, so I think what influenced me on wanting to uh, pick up this book, now this is a series that is a little older. This is back from the uh, mid 90s. Um, and I think what kind of raised my interest a little bit in this series is I'm currently reading the Sun Eater series by Christopher Arakio. So I wanted to go back a little bit and pick up some of these more classic uh, sci-fi books uh, that I missed out a lot when I was younger. And I also want to start trying to hit up a little more of those older uh, books anyway, because they never got like their YouTube exposure. So um, I figured this was going to be a perfect opportunity. And I've actually heard some really good things about uh, Deathstalker. Um, and like I said, this is an eight book series. You follow a man called Owen Deathstalker. Uh, it's a very, very space opera type of series. Um, and there's going to be uh, many of the uh, cliches that you have in sci-fi during that time. Uh, I believe it was inspired by uh, Star Wars, uh, the original series. So, hey, if it's like that, um, it sounds like something that I'm going to enjoy. At number seven, I have The Echo Saga by Philip Cantrell, uh, book one being Rise of the Ranger. Uh, this is a nine book epic fantasy series written by an indie author. Now I was looking over uh, Philip's bibliography and he's actually written several series, uh, including one that just started up uh, just in 2023. Uh, that series is A Time of Dragons, book one being Once There Were Heroes. So part of me kind of wants to read that one book first, just so I'm caught up uh, currently with uh, his work and then dive into the Echo Saga. I've, again, this is another series that's been uh, really highly regarded in the uh, booktube community as well as just the fantasy community in general. So um, I'm really excited to uh, dig in and find out what this series is about. And number eight, I have The Dandelion Dynasty by Ken Leo. Now this series is a four book series and it starts with A Grace of Kings as the first book. I will say, um, of all everything on my list so far, this is the one that's the most mysterious, the most, I'm really shutting everything off. Uh, reviews, uh, comments about it. Now I know um, in the hindsight, it is well-regarded series. So of course that's why I have it on my list to begin with, but I've shut off anything what this series is even remotely about. And I'm going to keep it that way as much as I can until I'm ready to begin this series. Um, I'm hoping to uh, 
potentially read this with other people, uh, either as uh, either a follow along or an actual official buddy read. I don't know, but um, I, I do know regardless, I am going to start it. Um, the one negative thing I will say, um, and this is just me being OCD, is my set on the shelves don't match. They're all mix, mix match, but, and I missed out on the beautiful Broken Binding editions. But hopefully uh, what's not present on the outside is definitely present on the inside. At number nine, we're going back to sci-fi with the Web Shifter series by Julia Trinita, book one being Beholder's Eye. This is another one of those old retro 90s reads uh, that I just never really got to. This is a trilogy series. So this is going to solve both those old 90s reads that I always want to get to, that I, I want to give more exposure to. Plus this is also going to give me an opportunity to uh, read more women authors works which um i felt like i was lacking a little bit in 2023 and i want to remedy that more in 2024 i don't think it was ne never on purpose it was just seemed to be accidental that everything i was reading was a male author and i definitely have some uh women authors um planned for the year uh, both in the indie space and the traditional published space at number 10, I have The Library Trilogy by Mark Lawrence, book one being the book that wouldn't burn. Uh, for me, uh, the one thing I l immediately am drawn to with Mark Lawrence is his support to the indie and self-pub community. Uh, he is the one who's actually hosting the uh, Spiffbo 9 contest currently going on right now uh, that I've talked repeatedly about on this channel. Um, so I've gotten a lot of my uh, indie reads from 2023 from this contest. He is just building this bridge between traditional pub and self-pub. Uh, so uh, regarding this series, uh, uh, another series I see on a lot of people uh, who have already started posting their best reads of 2023. Uh, and this book has popped up on a lot of lists. So needless to say, uh, it's something that um, I'm really uh, excited to start. I do wanna read this book um, pretty soon, uh, at least first quarter, hopefully, because his second book is coming out in April. So I want to get to uh, that book um, and be caught up with everybody else. So that'd be really fun to uh, have this opportunity to be caught up on a series with most other booktubers. At number 11, I have The Cycle of Fire by Jenny Wartz, book one being Storm Warden. Huh. I've had warts on my TBR probably, well, probably since the mid 90s, maybe unofficially um, since I didn't know what a TBR was. Um, so, um, but regardless, uh, it was always an author I've always wanted to get to and actually shocked I haven't yet. Um, I am happy to see that she has been promoted um, on BookTube a lot since uh, you get a lot of these uh 80s and 90s authors that you know never really had social media to market their books so this is really cool to see uh happen for her and of course it um reopened up my spark to say hey you know i need to read her books myself so i am going to start with the cycle of fire which is a trilogy um and i think some of her earliest work as well um, as much as I would love to dive into her 11 book epic series because I love long series, um, I'm going to hold off a little bit on that. Her last book to the series is coming out in 2024, so it will be a completed series. So that's something to look forward to. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to start off with uh, The Cycle of Fire, then hit up probably Empire trilogy that she uh, co-wrote with uh, Raymond Feist. And then finally, at number 12 is the only series by an author I've read other books by, so the author himself is not new, and that is the Dark Tower series by Stephen King, book one being The Gunslinger. Now, this uh, now eight book series, if you count the book that falls between four and five, has been long on my ATR uh, for many, many, many decades. Um, well, as many decades as I've been around and the series has started. Um, so um, 
I I don't know why I never got to this series. Um, I've read many of his standalones and I enjoy them, but and for a lover of fantasy, you would think I would immediately gravitate to the Dark Tower, but I just never got to it. So we're gonna definitely remedy that in 2024. From my understanding, there's a lot of like ties to some of his other reads. Now, honestly, guys, I'm just probably going to read the series. I'm not gonna try to fit in like, oh, I should read this book in between, you know, whatever, book two and book three, um, because I know there's a lot of ties of the Dark Tower in some of his other works. I'm just going to read The Dark Tower. <laughs> so um, maybe I'll change things up. We'll see. I'll let you guys know. That's it for this video, folks. What series do you plan to start in 2024? Let me know in the comments. My name is Christopher Navo. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next chapter. Take care. You want to make my eye twitch when I own a series? This is a good way to make my eye twitch. Everything is inconsistent with these uh, books. I don't know what's happened here. If this is just my set, if it's your set, let me know. Just pick one format, please. That's all I ask.